everyone welcome to my channel microbiology with sumi if you like my video please like share and subscribe to my channel today's topic is carbohydrate fermentation test so let's start with a short introduction whenever a new microorganism is discovered it becomes necessary to identify and catalog it so whenever a new microorganism is discovered it should be identified and classified now for the identification of this new microbe it is first isolated and microscopically examined and then further biochemically tested so the initial steps are isolation of that microorganism and microscopic examination after this two things are done further this microorganisms are biochemically tested once these steps are carried out we can identify this microorganisms after biochemical test it becomes easier to identify microorganisms now biochemical test are essential for the identification and classification of this microorganisms hence it is important to understand various biochemical test and their functioning now there are various biochemical test used for identification of various microorganisms so there are various biochemical test and we will go through this test one by one in my upcoming post here is a list of biochemical test carbohydrate fermentation test sugar mannitol fermentation test mbic test catalase test oxidase huge and lifson's test indol production test hydrogen sulfide production test decarboxylation test phenyl phenyl alanine deaminase test urea hydrolysis test nitrate reduction test ammonia production test starch hydrolysis casein hydrolysis gelatin hydrolysis lipid hydrolysis dehydrogenase test coagulase test hemolysis production test triple sugar iron agar test litmus test and lysine decarboxylation test these are the various tests which are carried out on the new isolated microorganisms now let's start with carbohydrate fermentation test carbohydrates are biological molecules which are made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen molecules there are four types of carbohydrates and they are shown in the following figure so carbohydrates are basically of four types monosaccharides disaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides now let's see this carbohydrates in detail now carbohydrates and its types monosaccharides are simple molecules of sugar it is water soluble and crystalline in nature the examples are glucose fructose glyceraldehydes and galactose so monosaccharides are a simple and a single molecule of sugar mono means single saccharide means sugar disaccharide is a simple carbohydrate formed when two monosaccharide molecules are joined together and a water molecule is removed so the examples are lactose sucrose sucrose and maltose so di means two and saccharides means sugar so two sugar molecules form disaccharides oligosaccharide oligosaccharide is a polymer containing small number of monosaccharides examples are fructo oligosaccharide galacto oligosaccharide and mannan so oligosaccharide is a polymeric chain of small molecules of monosaccharide polysaccharide the fourth one is polysaccharide are complex carbohydrate containing long chains of monosaccharide examples are starch glycogen cellulose and chitin so polysaccharides are long chain of monosaccharides and they are complex carbohydrate molecule now let's see carbohydrate fermentation test now first of all fermentation 
fermentation is a metabolic process in which bacteria or yeast convert substrate that is the raw material into a product like acid gas or alcohol and the product formed in fermentation process is of economic value now here what is done in carbohydrate fermentation test so let's see carbohydrate fermentation test demonstrate fermentation of sugars like glucose lactose or sucrose now the fermentation is noted by acid and gas production by bacterial cell so what is done in carbohydrate fermentation test the various sugars like glucose lactose and sucrose are inoculated with the help, with a culture and fermentation is carried out and the result that is acid or gas production is noted now what is the aim of carbohydrate fermentation test now the aim is to determine fermentation of sugars like glucose lactose and sucrose by bacterial cells now what are the requirements first one is nutrient broth here we require three nutrient broths with three different sugars glucose broth medium sucrose broth medium and lactose broth medium here we are going to carry carry out fermentation of these three sugars second one is indicator now in indicator we are going to use phenol red or anhydride indicator now third is durham's tube it is used for detection of gas production fourth one is bacterial culture so this is the aim and requirement of our experiment now let's see composition of sugar broth medium now here we require peptone 1 gram meat extract 0.3 gram nacl 0.5 gram distilled water 100 ml indicator 0.008 grams and sugar so other all ingredients are same but here sugar are different in three different media we are going to use three different sugars the sugar may be glucose lactose or sucrose and that is 0.5 gram now let's see the procedure take three different tubes containing three different types of sugar broth and invert a durham's tube in it and screw cap the tubes now here we are going to prepare three types of nutrient broth medium each nutrient broth will contain one sugar so here take three tubes containing three different sugars first of all label that three tubes then invert a durham's tube in it now durham's tube should be inverted in such a way that there is no air bubble in it this is very important point or else if there is any kind of air bubble in it you are going to get false results so it is important to check whether there is no air bubble in the durham's tube then further screw cap the tubes next the three sugar broth tubes are sterilized by autoclaving after sterilization the tubes are cooled down to room temperature and inoculated with a cell suspension in aseptic conditions now when you carry out the sterilization of this uh, nutrient broth medium after sterilization it is very important to bring down this nutrient media to room temperature because if in hot nutrient media you are going to inoculate the cell suspension the culture is going to die due to heat shock so it is very important to bring down the nutrient media to room temperature and then further inoculate the nutrient media with cell suspension in aseptic condition now these tubes are incubated at 37 degree for 24 hours after incubation the tubes are examined for acid and gas production and the results are noted down so this is the procedure of carbohydrate fermentation test let's see mechanism of carbohydrate fermentation test now the three sterile sugar broth tubes are inoculated with bacterial suspension and incubated for 24 hours during incubation the bacterial cells may or may not utilize the sugar 
if the cells utilize sugar there is acid and gas production and this change is observed by a change in color of broth first of all in sugar broth phenol red indicator is added and this indicator is ph sensitive indicator which is added for determination of acid production so here acid production is determined with the help of phenol red indicator initially the broth tubes are red in color and after incubation if there is acid production the color of broth changes from red to yellow if there is no change in color of broth then there is no acid production so it is simple if there is formation of acid the color of broth is going to change from red to yellow and if there is no acid production the color is going to remain the same secondly in sugar broth a durham's tube is inverted to determine gas production after incubation if a gas bubble is observed then there is gas production so here durham's tube is used to determine gas production the gas bubble indicates gas production and here is a important note phenol red is a ph sensitive indicator its its ph range is acidic ph it is yellow color and at alkaline ph it is red in color now let's see the observation there are three possibilities and they are after incubation if red color of a broth is observed then there is no fermentation so with the help of a diagrammatic representation i have tried to show here a uh, what kind of observation you are going to get so in the above image test tube a is inoculated with a cell suspension and incubated for 37 degree celsius for 24 hours and after incubation the red color was not changed to yellow and this indicated that there is no acid and no gas production here in a diagram you can say there is no air bubble formation in durham's tube so here there is no gas production also the second observation is in the above image test tube b is inoculated with cell suspension and incubated at 37 degrees celsius for 24 hours and after incubation the color of test tube was changed from red to yellow due to acid production and there is no gas production so here test tube a was inoculated and then incubated after incubation the change the change in color was observed the red color was changed into yellow colored but there was no air bubble formation in the durham's tube so here only acid is produced but no gas is produced so the third observation is in the above image test tube c was inoculated with a cell suspension incubated at 37 degree for 24 hours and after incubation the red color was changed to yellow color which indicates acid production as well as a gas bubble was observed in the durham's tube that indicates gas formation so this is the third observation now let's see the results if there is no change in color of a broth then the test is negative so if the red color remains the same after incubation then the test is negative if the yellow color of a broth is observed fermentation is carried out resulting acid production and it is indicated by plus sign if after incubation the yellow color is observed then it is the then it is positive and here it indicates acid production now this acid production is indicated by a positive sign and the third one is if the yellow color of a broth along with a gas bubble accumulated is observed then the fermentation is carried out resulting acid and gas production so if a yellow color is observed with a gas bubble in a durham's tube then the test is positive for acid production as well as gas formation so these are the three 
re results that you are going to get. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to write a comment in the comment section.